The iPhone 10 or X as a lot of people seem to call it is Apple's best redesigned in a very long time. Whether it's that bezel-less design or it's new software tweaks, it's a phone that I'm glad Apple made. But after about three months of using it regularly, how does Apple's newest flagship hold up compared to newer Androids? I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja and let's find out. At face value, the iPhone 10 is a pretty phone. The 82% screen to body ratio means the front is almost all screen minus that notch that I'll talk about a little bit later. At 5.8 inches, the phone is very compact and was easy to use with one hand. Now when Apple announced the phone, it said that they're using the strongest glass that's used on any phone ever. But even so, I'm starting to get little nicks and little scratches on the back of my device. And a lot of other people too are having that as well. Regardless, this phone looks really good, especially in this darker color, it looks really nice. But if you do wanna protect that glossy finish, check out dbrand. Hit the links down below and get a dbrand for your device. I'm rocking the red dragon skin. I also do have a screen protector and case and you can check those out linked below as well. This is the first time Apple has gone with an OLED panel with that unusual 1125 by 2436 pixel resolution. Now even though Apple doesn't have the highest specs when it comes to screens, their screens always do look really good. The colors are very poppy, it's very saturated and it just looks good. Now some may argue that skin tones and colors don't look perfect because it is saturated, but there's no denying how great the screen actually looks. I still prefer the Note 8 screen, but overall I do think the iPhone 10 screen is really good. Now I don't find any problems with the screen overall, and if you're coming from an older iPhone, you will definitely appreciate the difference as it is night and day. Now speaking of the screen, the notch on the iPhone 10 is the one thing retracting from it for making it truly bezel-less. And that's where many of the sensors for Face ID, the front-facing camera, is housed. Now, it's a huge deal for a lot of people and I really don't think about it too much until I go to landscape. Once I go to landscape, I definitely see the notch and it bothers me, but once you go back to portrait, it sort of blends into the phone, well, to me. And it just becomes a part of the phone and it's really not a big deal but I do like the fact that the face to unlock actually works really well. So if the notch is the reason that we need to have it, then let's keep the notch. The face to unlock is extremely impressive and it works really good in low light, surprisingly well actually. When you compare it to the Note 8, which doesn't work in low light too well, this is just a nice thing to have. Now I did find that the iPhone 10 face to unlock didn't work in direct sunlight or even under my studio lighting. Although I do find the low light being superior is something that's much more useful. The iPhone 10 definitely has some buggy software on there as the software is pretty new, but that doesn't mean the software is bad or slow. If anything, it's great. Even after I've used it for these three months, it's still zippy and responsive as ever. The only complaint I do have is that how bogged down it does get and how simple it is. Notification management is all over the place and I just can't get over how bad it is. And coming from Android, I just can't manage it. I pretty much ignore it and swipe it away when I'm done. But that's iOS 11 for you and the only fix to come is hopefully a newer version of iOS that actually fixes notifications. Moving to the camera, the iPhone 10 is pretty identical to the one on the iPhone 8 Plus from this year. It's a dual 12 megapixel unit which comes with optic image stabilization and the pictures it takes are really good. The 2x optical zoom and portrait mode tends to work better in low light now and you do get different lighting effects too. I tend to only use the subtle ones as it brings out the picture a little bit more and I really don't mess with the other ones that are so aggressive. Now the front facing camera to me needed an upgrade especially when you compare it directly to the Pixel 2 XL. Now portrait mode to me feels very unfinished even with the depth sensor on the front facing camera. But in general, I still think it's a great camera. It's not the best one out there, but it's very, very passable and it does compete directly with the Note 8, but not touching on the Pixel. So that really leaves us with the battery. The iPhone 10 has a rather small battery at 2716 milliamp. And it's always been pretty small compared to Android phones as iOS and Android runs differently. But for an average user, it should definitely hold up throughout the day and a little bit on the back end. 
for me, when I compare it directly to the Note 8, the Note 8 gives me better batteries and so does the Pixel, and the iPhone comes in third compared to phones I've used this year, but that's not saying it's a bad thing at all. The iPhone 10 does support fast charging, but it doesn't come out of the box like that. You need to spend another $80 on the official fast charging accessory to make it accessible. There are third party ones out there, but it's just crazy that you're spending so much for a phone and you can't get the most out of it out of the box. And trust me, I do recommend getting it, especially if you're spoiled with Android like I am. Plug it in for 15, 20 minutes and you get like three hours of battery life. You're not gonna get that here. If you wanna know more about that, hit the link up top GN Tech made a really good video about the iPhone 10 charging. But I guess the question is still out there, is the iPhone 10 a good phone? Yes, it definitely is. Is it worth the money? And that's the one that it always comes back to every single phone. Can I justify the price? I mean, for a thousand bucks, are you getting anything more compared to other phones that are a thousand dollars or compared to phone that's six hundred dollars? And the answer is definitely no. This phone is not gonna do anything different that other phones out there can't do. But at the same time, you're paying for a premium product and you're gonna pay a premium price for it. It makes it up there with the Note 8 and the Pixel, they all fall in the same category. Extremely great phones, but at the same time, it's just very expensive. And it's hard to recommend something that expensive when you can pick up a phone from OnePlus, pick up a phone from Huawei, or any of these manufacturers that pump out really good phones at a reasonable price. Anyways, guys, if you do wanna pick up the latest and greatest from Apple and experience what Android users have experienced for the last few years, shots fired, then definitely pick up the iPhone 10. Anyways, guys, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and I'll holler at you guys later. Peace.